Hey everyone, my name is Nick Moe, and when it comes to my desk setup, I'm always on the hunt for new tech that will take my setup to the next level. And today, I wanna to share with you one of my favorite pieces of tech that I've added to my desk this year. This is an eight inch high resolution touchscreen, or what I like to call the mini monitor version two. A few months ago, I made a video about my original mini monitor and how I use a small screen near my keyboard in my desk setup. And while the original was good, version two is better in every way. The screen is bigger and sharper. And so today I wanna to share with you all of the new ways I've integrated this mini monitor into my workflow and to hopefully give you some ideas of what you can do with a small screen in your own desk setup. First, let me give you a quick overview of the hardware and then we'll cover how I use this thing. As I mentioned, this is an 8.8 .8 inch display running at a resolution of 1920 by 480, which is crazy and basically means this is a super narrow display, unlike anything you'd see at a Best Buy or your local electronics store. And it's this unique shape and size that makes the mini monitor perfect to go on my desk near my keyboard. It's really not supposed to replace a normal monitor. Think of it more like like an accessory to your PC. And there are a ton of unique displays like this across the internet, and I've purchased several for testing purposes before making this video. But this specific model here was sent to me by the cool people over at keepmonkey.com, and they call it a display bar. I will link this specific model in the description if you're interested, but you should know that all of the use cases which I'm about to show you could apply to any small display you can get your hands on and place on your desk. Up first, let's talk about passive use use cases. Now, what do I mean by passive exactly? Well, this device is perfect for gathering bits of information at a glance. Think of it like a desk clock, but with a ton of extra features. And since I published that first mini monitor video, I have been reintroduced to the wonderful world of widgets. Shoutouts to Windows Vista. With widgets, I can create a dashboard of information and place it on my desk. I can see weather conditions. I have a calendar and of course the clock. And the thing about widgets is you can kind of go crazy here. Thanks to apps like Rain Meter, there are thousands of community made widgets that will look great on a mini monitor on your desk. Of course, another passive use case for the mini monitor is performance monitoring. So you can keep an eye on your CPU speeds or your GPU temps right in front of your keyboard. Next, let's talk about my second use case for the mini monitor, which is getting organized. For those who have seen the first video in the series, this may be a bit familiar, but to catch everyone else up quickly, having a small screen like this on your desk is a great way to stay organized throughout the day. First, there's to-do lists. Throughout my day, I keep a to-do list up on the mini monitor and I can check items off as I get them done. I like this because I can keep my to-do list in front of me, but I don't have to give up space on my main monitor or keep track of a paper to-do list, which I will absolutely lose. I'm using an app called Taskboard, which I will link below, but I'm also using Google Keep because with Google Keep, I can actually use the touchscreen of the mini monitor to jot down notes by hand. And I know I mentioned this in the previous video, but I still really like having Google Calendar on the mini monitor. It's a nice way to visualize my day or my week ahead, and it's all at my fingertips, not taking up space on my main display. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I like testing desk gadgets like this mini monitor because sometimes these small additions to my desk setup can completely change how I get work done. But I'm also an iPad user. I have an iPad Pro, which I really enjoy using when I'm not at my desk, which is why I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector for your iPad that makes the surface of the iPad feel less like a slippery piece of glass and more like actual paper, which makes using an Apple Pencil feel so much more natural for handwritten notes or sketching out ideas. The model I'm using here is Paperlike 2.1, which has a special coating of nanodots, which make the surface of your iPad feel like a real sheet of paper without reducing the picture quality of that beautiful display underneath. Paperlike was kind enough to send me their Pro Bundle, which comes with two screen protectors, some comfy grips for the Apple Pencil, as well as this screen cleaning kit, which features a sprayer and a microfiber cloth all in one tiny package, which I immediately added to my travel setup. Overall, Paperlike has made using my Apple Pencil and iPad Pro more enjoyable. And if you're interested in picking up one for yourself, be sure to use my link, which I have on screen and in the description below. And thank you to Paperlike for sponsoring today's video. Okay, let's get back to the mini monitor. 
Let's talk about some more experimental use cases that I've come up with for the mini monitor. They may or may not be perfect, but I thought they were too interesting not to share with you guys. In case I didn't make it clear, you can use the mini monitor in portrait or landscape orientations. Now in my first mini monitor video, I really only tested the device in landscape mode. And it turns out when you rotate this thing 90 degrees, you open up a ton of interesting options. Of course, you can use the widgets or the organization tools I mentioned earlier in portrait mode. But you can also use apps that require more vertical space like ChatGPT. Now, is there a practical reason to use ChatGPT on a tiny screen like this instead of your main monitor? No, but when I have writer's block and I need some options to help me get through it, I will pin a chat GPT window to the mini monitor so I can glance at it if I need to. Another mini monitor experiment I've come across is monitoring audio. Now last year I made a video about a gadget called the PC panel, which is a device you can use to control the volume of different apps at your desk. A bunch of you left comments on that video telling me about a program called Ear Trumpet, which basically does the same thing as the PC panel but with software. Now, Ear Trumpet on its own is good, but with the mini monitor, it's even better. Because now I can reach over and touch these sliders to adjust the volume of all of my different apps at my fingertips. The last experiment I wanna discuss has to do with the mini monitor's touchscreen. So by default, when you plug this thing into a PC, it behaves like a touchpad and not a touchscreen. But what's the difference? Well, a touchpad is what you see on a laptop. You can use two fingers to scroll, or you can pinch to zoom. And as you can see, when I do this, the widgets on the mini monitor don't do anything. It's basically an Apple Magic trackpad with a screen on it. That is a really cool idea to me. A touchpad that can also display information. But unfortunately, the gestures are a little hit or miss, which is why I call this an experiment and not a killer feature. Also, you should know that you can use this like a regular touchscreen. You could use a stylus and take notes, or you could put a bunch of icons on here and use it as a sort of macro pad or a program launcher, but it comes with a pretty big downside. If you wanna use this display as a traditional touchscreen, you have to make the mini monitor your main display in Windows, which can cause some frustrations to say the least. Speaking of issues, there are a few drawbacks to small displays like this that you should be aware of. First, even though version two looks a lot nicer than version one, you should know that these small displays still have a very DIY spirit to them. You will be adjusting things like resolution and scaling to try to dial in the settings that work for you. Second, and this may be limited to my specific model, but controlling the brightness can be an issue on small screens like this. Okay, so let's wrap this video up with some recommendations. Should you pick up a mini monitor for your own desk setup? If you're the type of person who sees the value in the passive use cases, like performance monitoring, or just having a calendar and a to-do list near your keyboard, a mini monitor like this can be a great addition to your desk setup. It's also great for people who have smaller desks with less space to work with, or if you're like me and have a gigantic monitor taking up almost all of your desk, a small screen like this is a great way to add a bit more flexibility to your setup. But what if you don't care about tiny screens and what you really want is that tactile control? Well, in that case, you're gonna wanna check out my previous desk experiment where I added eight knobs to my desk setup for productivity reasons. Thanks for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.